the madman. Hey, hey, all of the cards are now revealed, and I'm gonna do a final review. So let's begin with the class cards. So we start off with Nash. Joins in a long-standing series of bad druid cards, such as Bite and such as Claw. So if you thought Bite was good, then you'll love Nash for three mana. Give your hero plus three attack and gain three armor. This card seems to be getting outclassed by Feral Rage. Uh, Feral Rage gives you the option to either do four attack or gain eight armor, which is generally better than three and three because there's a few matchups where you really want to do the attack and there's a few matchups where you really want to gain the armor. Uh, given the utter unplayability of Bite, I think it's pretty safe to say that Nash will not see play. And it's a crime to think about how much worse this card is compared to Bash. And yes, we're comparing two different class cards with each other, but uh, still it's worth comparing that apparently Druids do Bash really badly. Strongshell Scavenger, 4 mana 2, 3, it's got the Warrior Bolster effect, Valakrai give your taunt minions plus 2, plus 2. Strongshell Scavenger is going to be even tougher to use than Bolster because it costs 4 mana, and you usually want to buff your taunt minions up right after you play them. If you manage to buff one minion with it, it's a 4 mana 4, 5 with some charge ability, you'd buff two minions with it and that's value. But the trick is getting to buff two taunt minions. Certainly consideration for taunt druid, but Due to the nature of requiring you to have a taunt minion and then still playing this for four, that's rough. Uh, given that we can see the entire set now, I can say at this point I don't believe that the scavenger will see play due to the lack of ability to create lots of small taunt minions. Toxic Arrow is a really interesting hunter card. One of those cards that's coming in with both a benefit but a drawback side in the sense that if you don't finish off your opponent's minion with Toxic Arrow, then it gives them poisonous, which is bad. Uh, or you can give your own minion poisonous, but you deal two damage to it. So most realistically, it's going to be used as deal two damage, but when you compare this card with Arcane Shot, it seems like a crime to cost the set too, since Arcane Shot can also go face, which would be justification in making Toxic Arrow cost one. But you're getting the serious utility value of being able to kill a really large minion as well. Arcane Shot does suck in the late game. But Toxic Arrow, uh, you place it on your 3 health minion, send it against the minion, bam. So from that sense, you would never really run Toxic Arrow and unless you also expected to give something poisonous. And 2 mana to give something poisonous seems like a really bad card. So, seems pretty weak. Uh, it feels like this could probably work for 1 mana, but you could also run Hunter's Mark. But the thing about Hunter's Mark is you can't kill a weak minion outright with Hunter's Mark. So, I mean, there's... There's justification in it being costed this much, but it seems like it's been costed just at a price that it will see no play at all. I'm not even sure it would see play at one mana. Maybe it would. Probably it would. Maybe it'd be a good card. Eh. Exploding Bloat Bat. Four mana, two, one. Death Rattle. Deal two damage to all enemy minions. Wow, four mana, two, one? We can compare this card with previously released Explosive Sheep, which for just two mana, Gave a 1-1 deal 2 damage to all minions, but at least in Mage you could fire blast it immediately and deal 2 damage to all minions. Uh, so I don't feel like the benefit of dealing damage to just enemy minions really justifies this disgustingly high cost. I just look at the mana to stat ratio on this and it's like, scratch, 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 what were they thinking? Obviously meant for a control hunter type build, and control hunter is an archetype that tries to be formulated with the new uh, hunter death knight card, which really wants a late game, but there's no way that exploding bloat bat would ever see play in that deck. It is a Consecration with a 2-1 body attached, but then again, if you wanted to make that argument, you could say that Hunter has a 2-mana Consecration and an Explosive Trap. Basically, card's super bad, uh, because it's delayed and because your opponent gets to control how it goes on. Doomerang. Throw your weapon at a minion, it deals its damage, then returns to your hand. So this is a way to kind of re-salvage your low durability weapon. Uh, you swing three times with Assassin's Blade, you go ahead and Doomerang, and then you get your Assassin's Blade back, which you can play uh, yet again. Effectively getting seven swings with Assassin's Blade. Wow. Card seems reasonable in the sense that uh, you also don't have to take the damage from your final swing. Uh, the main problem is finding the correct weapon to combo the Doomerang with. Oh, and by the way, since it's the weapon dealing the damage, you get the lifesteal benefits if the weapon has lifesteal. 
and you get the poisonous effects if the weapon has poisonous as well. Bone Baron is a new rogue, 5 mana 5-5. Five, five. That's some solid stats, uh, hopefully we see a good ability along with that. Death Rattle, add 2 one, one skeletons to your hand. Eh, so I did a little bit of theory crafting and was like, okay, so at one point or another, you could get enough skeletons to be worth it. Like, how good would the Death Rattle have to be? And I was like, draw a card would be pretty good. That'd be 5 mana 5-5 five, five Death Rattle, draw a card. That would probably see play. So then the question is, are 2 one, one skeletons, uh, which cost 1 mana apiece, better than draw a card? And the conclusion I came up with is no. Uh, so I don't think the Bone Baron will see play. The one ones are just too insignificant. They can help with uh, activating combo, they can buff your Edwin Van Cleef, but still just, ah, eh, they're so inconsequential. So kind of a fair card, but fair isn't enough to cut it in Constructed. You need something that goes plus ultra. For Rogue, we've got an interesting epic, uh, six mana, five, five Spectral Pillager. Combo, deal damage equal to the number of other cards you've played this turn, so needless to say, you want to play a bunch of small cards first, and then play it, so a little bit of backstab, a little bit of coining, a little bit of eviscerating, a little bit of prepping, but wait, didn't you want to play that on the Gadget Sand Auctioneer turn instead? To draw a card instead of dealing a damage? Uh, this card can also be compared to Vile Spine Slayer. Uh, if you're using it on minions, False Spine Slayer does infinite damage to a minion. So it seems like Spectral Pillager's main purpose then would be to try to be like a huge, incredible finisher on the face. And if you had the Gadgetson Auctioneer out, I suppose, already, you might be able to like do some sort of super miracle, cast like 10 cards, play a Spectral Pillager, battle cry, deal 10 damage to the face. But by then you've probably already won, right? Uh, card seems like it's a card made for memes instead. The six mana on the card is really prohibitive, but there are ways that you can perhaps make it cost uh, a lot less. For example, you have the Spectral Pillager out on the board already, and then you Shadow Caster into your hand, and this card is a lot better at a, as a one mana one one. But boy, that is a lot of work. And Hearthstone, cards that take a lot of work to work, tend to be bad. Dark Conviction, two mana, get Keeper of Oldeman's effect uh, as of old. Uh, set a minion's attack and health to 3. So your Keeper of Oldemon is a 4 mana 3-4, and that was a strong card, although surprisingly not even played as a 2 of in every single deck. So Dark Conviction has a ways to work up because for Keeper of Oldemon, not only are you only paying 2 mana more for a 3-4, uh, you're also bundling the effect. Uh, if you were looking for a late game debuff card, Humility would probably be better and equality is probably better. So I see this card as mainly an aggressive card. Uh, even though it compares poorly to the Keeper of Oldemon, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have its uh, place as well as a card that comes out two turns earlier than Keeper of Oldemon. And this isn't a meta that not only has Righteous Defender, but has another great target, Argent Squire, for Dark Conviction. I can see this card actually seeing play in those aggressive decks. And we'll just uh, briefly mention Quest Paladin, that this can work there, but not really, because Quest Paladin still sucks. Arrogant Crusader. This uh, card seems perfect for Aggro Paladin. Death Rattle, if you, it's your opponent's turn, summon a 2-2 two -two Ghoul. If your opponent doesn't deal with it, you're hitting 5 face each turn for 4 mana. That's pretty good. But it's also sticky, because you're not going to trade with it. Uh, you're just going to go face. And the opponent does not want to take 5 damage a turn, so they're going to clear it. And then you get a 2-2. Two -two, which means you basically if you have 4 mana for a 7-4 in stats. That's pretty good. And it's better than a 4 mana 7 4 because at the 4 mana level, 4 health can be dealt with just like 2 health can be dealt with, but it's more difficult to deal with 2 health and then 2 health again. Uh, the card actually has quite some comparison to Paladin Shredder as well, which is a 4 mana 4 3 death rattle summon about a 2 3. Uh, this one is a more aggressive Shredder. I mean, sometimes your opponent would even kill the Shredder just because 4 damage a turn was a lot, even if they couldn't deal with the death rattle immediately. In the same way, the Aragon Crusader presents even more of a threat than the Paladin Shredder. And if we're comparing a card to Paladin Shredder, that tends to work well for the card, even if they have Taunt. Uh, you don't get the Death Rattle, but you dealt 5 damage for 4 mana, that's pretty good. To a Taunt. Avalanche! Uh, this one was kind of tough to evaluate, it's got a very different effect. For 4 mana, uh, Shaman Spell freeze a minion and deal 3 damage to adjacent ones. Uh, mage for 2 mana more, and instead of freezing the minion, just goes ahead and kills it. Interestingly enough, Meteor is not necessarily even run in Control Mages, so that's a start. I think uh, Lightning Storm is probably better than Avalanche in the sense that it blankets the board with uh, 2 to 3 or with the spell damage 3 to 4 
damage. And then Volcano just kills the entire board, usually. You can even compare it with Jade Lightning for 4 mana, it deals 4 damage to 1 minion, and summons you something. Avalanche, however, against 1 minion, is a 4 mana freezing potion. And even with 2 minions, it's like a Frost Bolt which freezes one, but deals damage to the other. And then with 3 minions, you get the full effect, but at that point, maybe you should just be Lightning Storming or Volcanoing. Uh, so an interesting new uh, AoE card to add in. Uh, maybe it fits in with the free shaman theme, but since we've seen all the freeze shaman cards now, uh, and I didn't immediately get a sense of wonderment through it, doesn't look like it'll work out to me. Uh, shaman gets an 11 drop, Snow Fury Giant, 8-8. Eight, eight. Cost one less for each mana crystal. You've overloaded this game. So the question is about how many uh, mana savings is that on average? Uh, let's say you manage to play a Feral Spirit, you manage to do a Lightning Storm, you throw out a Volcano, you throw in a Jinyu Water Speaker, overload for one, or Jade Claws in one, and that's a discount of seven. Four mana eight, eight. that's not too bad. Uh, it's a good card potentially for the big late game control shaman who plays with Ancestral Spirits. 8-8 eight, eight is a pretty good target for that, especially if it costs really cheap. Uh, you can even do the Spirit Echoes on it, and similar to Thing From Below, a low cost card getting Spirit Echoed is really strong. Even if that specific control shaman deck doesn't end up seeing play, uh, this 11 is the bridge between 10 and 12, so now your Yogg-Saron can evolve into 11 and stop casting spells, and certain 12 drops can actually be devolved into 8-8s now. And other 10 drops can be evolved into 8-8s as well. Blood Reaver Goldon! So the first time I saw the card, I was like, ha ha ha, dust. So for 10 mana, you get the effect of summoning all friendly demons that died this turn, and you get 5 armor. But then you realize this is basically the same text that was on the Zoth. Uh, you get a fast effect of summoning all friendly demons. So the question is, are there enough good demons out there to uh, formulate this? Now in the reveal stream, they were playing a deck with Doomguard in it. That's a little bit dangerous because if you're playing Doomguard, you can discard Blood Reaver Gul'dan. If you're playing Lakari Fellhound, you can discard Gul'dan. But the good news is, if you somehow manage to play those cards and you don't discard Gul'dan, that's, uh, that's pretty incredible, if that happens to work. I do think that you want to play this with some demons, even though its hero power is insane. Deal 3 damage and gain 3 health. Clearly really, really strong hero power, but it's so slow. First you have to pay 10 mana to only gain 5 armor, which is why I think you absolutely need to summon some demons at least with it. And then you get to start doing this. I suppose a fun effect that you can do with this is uh, play it in a Kazakus Cruel deck. Cruel can get you your demons with no downside, so you get your Doom Guard and you get your Lakari Fellhand uh, without discarding the cards. And then they die somehow, you play Blood Reaver Gul'dan, you get the Cruel, you get the Doom Guard, you get the Fellhound. Interesting thought, you get to run Kazakus too while you're at it. Uh, Drain Soul trumps Lifesteal by quite a bit. I can only deal damage to minions, but uh, 2 damage, gain 2 health, well, that seems very reasonable. Especially as poor Warlock has not had a 2 mana card in some time, especially in control. Uh, even gets benefited by spell damage. If you buff the damage on this, you gain more health as well. Seems like a nice utility card which should probably make it into control Warlock decks. Now the task is to formulate a control Warlock deck. Death Revenant. 5 mana, 3-3 three, three gains, plus 1, plus 1 for each damage minion. Given the baseline of 5 mana cards, seems like you'd want to cast this when there were about 3 damage minions to get an average effect of a 5 mana 6-6. Six, six. But even if there were, uh, say you have 2 of them, then Battle Rage would be better, since that's 2 mana draw 3. And by the way, 3 mana, that's like just barely enough to get it to be acceptable, 5 mana 6-6. Six, six. It's really hard to like get the value out of this card, and when you don't have it going off, it's a 5 mana 3-3. Three, three. Just seems bad. A fair comparison is with Frostwolf Warlord, which doesn't even see any play, uh, but usually if there are a lot of damaged minions, it's because you've controlled the battlefield, uh, and you have most of the minions, so Frostwolf Warlord would probably still be bigger than this. And finally, with the class cards, we conclude with a big one, Scourge Lord Garish. Battlecry, equip a 4-3 Shadowmourne that also damages adjacent minions. So how good is a 4-3 Shadowmourne that d also deals damage to adjacent minions? Really optimistically, you're getting 3 swipes out of it. Swipe plus plus because uh, it deals 4 damage to 3 targets. 
If you really want to think optimistically, it's like getting three flame strikes when you're hitting like three minions with flame strike each time. Let's just call it seven mana then. And then you get the five extra armor. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, just basically based off of that. And then we look at the hero power that comes with the uh, Scourge Lord Garrosh. It's Bladestorm. That's actually one of the worst hero powers. But I suppose given how strong the base character is. All right. You turn into basically being able to two mana whirlwind. For the most part, dealing one damage to all minions is better than gaining two armor. Gaining two armor is one of the worst hero powers in the game. It just happens to synergize with warrior really well because you take so much damage and you're controlling the board. The thing is, I guess it's it's not really a strict upgrade. Unlike most of the other ones, it's kind of a side grade. So will we be seeing control warriors running this, or even uh, tempo warriors? Probably not. Uh, really aggressive warriors because uh, you're getting a weapon that is board control. Well, it depends on how important it was to keep gaining armor in the late game to stabilize. Perhaps even more of a mid-range tempo warrior rather than a heavy control warrior deck. Because control warrior decks are characterized by the ability to constantly stabilize by armoring up, which allows you to save up for more brawls and whatnot. But sometimes, a good defense is a good offense. Just blade storm down the opponent's minions. This card does enable a new type of warrior, control warrior. Uh, for a very long time, we've seen just Taunt Warrior. Obviously, you wouldn't really want to run Taunt Warrior's quest and this card. So, it's back! Control Warrior's finally back. Maybe. 